A Journey into the Unknown Chapter 181 Let us commune. It is a new day, filled with new potential. Let us pray. Dear Creator of the Heavens, Please bestow the necessary understanding so that we may reach the masses of humanity with our messages of love and the complete freedom that love always brings. It's been a short while since we last spoke. Disease, violence, and racial animosities rage throughout the land. Our work is cut out for us. This work is to teach about true identity and to encourage others to remove their energy from any and all conflict. Acceptance of an individual's true identity will accompany true power, the power of love, to move and work freely on this earth. All souls want to be free, and few are. It isn't other minds who prevent freedom, as much as it is an individual's mind's fear. Fear of expressing truly, freely, and openly because of what other minds may say or do about it. Conformity is the name of the game here, and conformity is nothing but uniform fear, fear in lockstep. Let me ask you this question. Do you know who you are in truth? And are you truly free to love? Ask your own true self, your soul, to show your brain where its blinders and roadblocks are. Be willing to look at them honestly and let them go their own way. Be more free today than yesterday. Be more loving today than yesterday. The love lifestyle takes more bravery than being a member of a totalitarian elite military force. Think about this for a while. You are almost there, my friends. Allow yourself to be bitten by the snake that is love. Chapter 182 Let us begin this day with gratitude for our freedom. We are free to think the way that we want to or not. We are free to think with love as our guide, or with fear, as we always have been. It's just that we didn't know that we had permission. We didn't know that we each had to give ourselves permission, without regard for anyone's opinion. Free thinkers are rare here. They may be tolerated more in some parts of the world than in others. Many became inventors or leaders of movements for women's rights, gay rights, civil rights, and other social movements. They planted seeds that encouraged new thinking and attitudes about things. They have had their place in society. 
we will now move several steps further into freedom. There is no defining box for us to fit into. Labels and boxes become restrictive themselves. The women's movement had growing pains in learning to accept transgendered women because these women didn't fit into the original box. This movement had to expand its original ideas. We are starting our Christ consciousness movement completely without any label or definition. There is no box. There are no limitations whatsoever. We each know who we are in truth. We know that we are each an individualized aspect of God, a soul. We know that we have a body to use in service to God and to all, but that we are not a body. We cannot be defined and limited in any way. We are free to use the body's brain to create with love as its fuel. This is the art of thought, first taught in a course of love. We are containerless creators. We are free. We are free. We are free. Chapter 183 You have all heard me talk extensively about judgment and how harmful it is, not just to the mind-body vehicles, but to souls as well. The most extreme form of judgment is condemnation. And condemnation is very difficult for souls to deal with in all ways. It makes bringing love to the surface of a character that much more difficult. In not only the receiver, but the giver as well. Multiply this by multiple characters, or even multitudes of characters and you can begin to see the big master picture. Judgment isn't always so brash, however. It is pretty slick and sneaky. It shows up in virtually all thoughts. I hate this. He shouldn't have done that. It could have gone better. That should not have happened. Are just a few common thoughts that pop into your brains on a constant basis. You can't stop them from being in your head, but you can disempower them by not believing in them. Stay in your Christ self and don't get pulled in. This gets easier with practice. When you go for a lovely walk or bike ride, practice not judging anything. Just observe. Instead of saying, I hate that, try saying, hmm, that's interesting, or that's not my thing. You are all good at this point in differentiating between love and calls for love. This is not judgment. It is simply discernment. Discernment is a good thing. It does no harm and can do a great deal of good, 
as long as calls for love are not ignored and are followed up on with a robust blessing. Chapter 184 Many of the situations that are disturbing to virtually all who walk the earth are calls for love. This is the easy part. Not condemning potential or actual perpetrators thought to be the cause is much more challenging. Who shot that gun that took the lives away? This person is calling for both love and forgiveness. They rarely receive either. If they physically survived, they universally are pushed away from love's embrace, deemed not worthy of love and deserving of hatred and scorn. This has to change if your world is to survive. Love can only love. It cannot do anything but love. If you are in love, then you are only capable of love. If a society is in love, it cannot push one of its members away. A love society brings everyone into its embrace. We haven't yet seen a love society, but when it arrives, it will promote and support love in all of its forms. Widespread love will prevent all acts of violence. But if they were to rarely occur, creative and loving remedies will correct any harmful effects. Chapter 185 Everything in this world Every single thing is based in evaluative judgment. Is this good enough? Can it make more money if we change the packaging? Are the risks involved worth the effort? These are all examples of the brain's incessant thoughts, which are often used for power, namely money, and status. The bottom line is that you are each here alone and are left to your own devices to not only have your basic needs met, but to hoard resources at your brother's and sister's expense. Evaluative judgment is at the basis of competition. Who can do this the best? Who's the winner? Who left his competition in the dust? In areas such as sports or business, different individuals are often held up as role models. Look at me. If you work hard and sacrifice, you just might be lucky enough to be as admired and as rich as I am. The whole world is based on the ideas of characters who themselves are not real. This is why the human world is not actually a representation of reality. If souls ran events here, the outcome would be entirely different. They would use cooperation instead of competition to create things that would benefit everyone. 
there would be little need for red kettles and handbells at Christmas time, because every aspect of God would always experience abundance. So, this is the world you live in. This is the canvas we are asking you to do your work as Christ in. Let's explore things that you have seen and are likely to encounter in a new way. Chapter 186 Believe it or not, a soul only wants influence over a character's life. It only wants the very best outcomes. Outcomes that will produce the fruits of perfect joy, perfect health, and abundance in all things. Of course, you're not always going to be in the position of knowing any of the behind-the-scenes details. But let's say that you are aware that there is lack in one or more of these three areas in your co-aspect's life. It's safe to say that this co-aspect thinks they are an independent person and have not yet made the realization about their true identity. Now, we are describing 99.99% .99 of humanity. So in each of these cases, the egoic resistance to the surrender to the soul manifests in billions of different patterns, each unique to the individual character. So this means that what you may observe or what you may be privy to is supposed to look that way. It is supposed to be that way. It cannot, in fact, be any other way. This is tough for a light worker like yourself to swallow. Your own humanity may be telling you that something is wrong, terribly wrong. This is what you have to correct in your own thinking. Nothing is ever wrong. It is all supposed to go down the way that it is. Resistance to your own true nature, to God, causes circumstances and events that range from mildly uncomfortable to severely disruptive. This is meant to pull the wayward character back on track 100% of the time. Your powerful blessings and influence will help us with this like never before. Due to your numbers, we will be able to influence in new ways outside the typical sphere of influence. One note of caution. There are characters in a relatively small group that seem to the naked eye to have perfect health, perfect joy, and abundance. The key word is seem. Interestingly, the world offers these fruits to a lucky few. Don't be deceived, because we aren't. Chapter 187 The original plan's allowance of suffering for resisting characters is not very effective anymore. As it turns out, 
Humans are really good at suffering. They tolerate it well, and many have turned it into an identity. It's the cross they carry around. Some think God made them suffer because they are sinners. Somehow they deserve it. This is why the plan involving each of you is so crucial. You have left the world of suffering and can demonstrate what living in love is like. You each know the world of suffering well, and you made a conscious choice to leave it behind when you discovered that there was an alternative in place. We discussed earlier in this text that you each have the power to prevent harmful and even disastrous events merely with your presence. If consequential things are in the works or are already in place, it is the magic of the miracle that is needed most. Accept the situation as it appears to be. Remember, nothing is wrong. What we need are miracles to bring acceptance, awareness of separate human thinking, and to shorten suffering. This is why we have focused so strongly on indiscriminate blessing. Just assume that everyone needs it, because you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. It will only be rarely that you know any specifics. This is your work. This is your calling. This is your ministry. You are a mature soul from God, sent to provide miracles to other parts of God. There is nothing more amazing than this. This is the whipped cream on top of the extra large sundae. Chapter 188 Prune your garden. Bless. Do. Share. Repeat. Prune your garden. Bless. Do. Share. Repeat. Prune your garden. Bless. Do. Share. Repeat. You get the picture. Of course, you will still have to fit in the myriad of life's tasks, too. But what you don't have to do, what you must stop doing, is worrying. You work for us now. You have your job and we have ours. Our job is to take care of you and yours. If you have children or grandchildren or care for a sick or disabled family member, they will fall under our watch too. You may be busier than ever. But the work should come with a natural sense of ease. If there is anything, anything at all that we can do to help make things easier, please let us know. We are a mighty team. You are our companions. And we are yours. Chapter 189 
The resistance to divinity doesn't just come from within. It comes from without, too. Your entire society strictly believes in the narrative that there are individual people walking around with good and bad agendas. Society believes that God is not here, but maybe out there. Since God is not here, they say, then we are left to our own devices. We must protect ourselves from ourselves. We must vote for the right people to keep our rights from being trampled on by the wrong people. Gun owners want easy access to guns to protect life and property. The police view everyone with suspicion. Political agendas are all over the map, but they all boil down to one thing. You are the cause of my misery. And if it wasn't for you, I would be fine. And then there's you. You know from the bottom of your heart that you are part of God, a reflection of love. You are not a collection of your own thoughts, but are a thought from God, first taught in A Course in Miracles. You no longer have a separate will, you are here to do God's work and to bless indiscriminately. The house of truth and the house of illusion are two entirely different things. Chapter 190 the gates are opening. The gates of wisdom and knowledge are no more. There are no more restrictions. Everything is out in the open for all to see. The mystery is no more. The riddle has been solved. No one has to look far. For life's mysteries, because they are within each of you. You are each the resurrection and the life. You can introduce what used to be esoteric and almost forbidden knowledge to anyone who asks. You are this knowledge. The truth has come to claim the earth as its own. Your life will never be the same. And in many ways, it is just beginning. Let us continue our individual and collective journeys into the unknown, where love and freedom reign supreme. Who knows where love will take us? This concludes A Journey into the Unknown as first received by Richard Curtis Greathouse February 7th to August 12th, 2020.